Madam, there. It's Madam, and I call the right oh, Madam Speaker. Winston Peters. Uh, there can be few past occasions when this parliament has been treated to such cant and pious bulldust. Particularly from that member there, who stood in this house and he told parliament that he had made a disclosure to the person responsible for MPs' pecuniary interests. That statement, of course, was not true. And he still has not shown Parliament the evidence for the statement he made about that. His record is to have been a, le a deputy leader of the National Party for guess how long? He was a deputy leader of the National Party for two weeks. But here's my evidence. Go and ask, go and ask Morris Williamson. Go and ask Morris Williamson, and that member can shout at the top of his voice. But I'll make the difference between me and that member there. Between order, me and that order. member there. Sit down. Now, I think we should all calm down, and I'd ask the member who has the floor to please address the bill. This is the third reading, Madam Chair, and it's about what went on before. No, I know what a third no. reading is about. I, I'm, look, I'm sorry, but you do not argue with the Chair. Yes, I have I asked you to address the bill. Would you come to the bill? It is a third reading. It is a third reading, Madam Chair, and it's about the matters that were dealt with before, and I'm getting to the principle that's at stake here, which is this, that if a Member of Parliament disagrees with his or her caucus, then they should resign and put it on the line in a by-election. And guess who did that? I did. So I'm not asking somebody to do something different. No, I'm the one person that in all those years did it and then went on to the next election with a full mandate. What this man suggests we do is that people carry on regardless of what the voters said and regard themselves as the person in which the trust of the whole electorate is proposed, even though they're not on the same ticket. And he gets up here drooping and dripping with so-called sincerity about how he's so ashamed. Ask Morris Williamson. Now, Myrtle Rust can make all the noise she likes. Myrtle Rust can make all the noise she likes. Oh, Mr. Williamson knows, as I know, that the person who was the baggage man leading the charge to get Morris expelled was, guess who? Oh, that man of integrity called Nick Smith. Man of integrity called Nick Smith. I know this man's form. The Honourable, the Honourable Dr Nixon. Are very clear. They are clear. And that is when a member has given a personal explanation, of which I gave when the Prime Minister yep. previously made this Volcats accusation, and it should stand. Yeah, and it does stand, and the member knows that he's been here long enough. That's a right, personal Madam Chair. Why don't I get Morris Williams to be, to be my witness then? Are you asking? Why don't, Madam Chair, why don't I get Morris Williams to be my witness? Look, look I, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to ask the member who has the floor to speak, to focus on the bill, and he knows full well that standing orders prevent him from raising an issue that has had a personal explanation. So will the member just resume his speech? What Mr Smith is arguing for is that a candidate stand on a list that is supported by the political party and that candidate's colleagues, get to parliament and please themselves what they do, and all of a sudden have the whole trust of the electorate in an MMP environment reposed in that recalcitrant member. Everybody knows under this bill it's about MMP. And if the public vote a party 20% of the vote, then that part of party is under our law entitled to have 20% of the representation in Parliament. That's what the law says. But not Mr Smith. He says, oh no, we can make that 15 just by the unilateral actions unsanctioned by the electorate of MPs. And Mr Smith is so beleaguered now that having been going on the first reading the committee stages and, uh, and, and the uh, second reading and every other time in this bill, he can't even keep his mouth closed for 10 minutes because he's still trying to make out a failed argument. Shouting won't change it. Shouting won't change it. Mr Smith, the difference between Winston Peters and a man called Smith is I have the respect of the public because I resigned. I resigned, had a by-election, and I had in the by-election. Well, what would that member know? Hmm. The weed-eating specialist. The weed-eating specialist decides she's going to interpose it and tell us what she knows about the matter. Can I just say, can I just say that when I had a by-election on the question of representation, Mr Smith and his colleagues never even turned up. 
Now, don't smile now. Don't look away. Here's the test of what I'm saying. I put the principles behind our arguments or behind this bill on the line, and when I did, the National Party never even turned up. And that's why we got 90.28% of the vote, which is still a record, just in case Myrtle Russ doesn't know that. I did. Could we come to the bill? I did. But I can't handle it. Point of order, the Honourable Maggie Barry. I would imagine that um, the uh, derogatory reference that the member who's just resumed a seat is making is directed at me. I take offence at it and would ask that he withdraw and apologise. Uh, the, the difficulty we have is that um, the member is assuming because he didn't actually name the member that he was being derogatory about, and there was quite a bit of insult being thrown around about a, a number of members. So, look, I would really like the member who has the floor to address the bill. This is the third reading, and I would ask him now, we are five, minute, five and a half minutes to go, could he please talk about the bill as it has emerged from the Committee of the Whole House? Madam Chair, the fundamental principle of this bill is that the electoral system in this country, which is MMP, is honoured. And that's what I'm dealing with. I'm not going to be put off by all sorts of challenges as to whether it's relevant or not. The fundamental principle is, does MMP exist in this country with exactitude, or can members of parliament please themselves as to whether it stands or not? We passed this law in a choice of a referendum in 1992 and a final one in 1993. It's been going for 25 years, and I'd expect people to understand the principles. It's fundamental to this bill. That's what I'm dealing with. But why would the National Party be so concerned about this issue? And I'll tell you why it is. There are 45 members of parliament who have left National in the last nine years. I would have thought they'd be grabbing this bill with both hands. I would have, seen, I would have thought they'd be seeing this as their grateful sanctuary. 45 MPs. Two pages in the last nine years. A lot were kicked. A lot got the boot. Some got pushed. Some jumped. They didn't. Some jumped because they realised that they were on their way. And as a consequence, and as a consequence, we have these people. We have these people making all sorts of statements. Now, can I just say, with sympathy to my Green colleagues, this: Do they not remember? Do they not remember when? Two members of parliament for the Green Party, Fitzsimons was the first one. You know who the second one was? Does my colleague remember that member? Well, I do. And they signed a declaration to stay with the Alliance all the way to the next election. That's what they did. And here we have people here saying that somehow I'm imposing this provision. That's false. The law that we are putting through today was a law that, that existed on our statute books at the start of the century. It was a law that existed on our statute books at the start of the century. Nothing new about that. Now, I can't remember back then, of course, Morris Williamson, uh, not Morris Williamson, Mr Nick Smith, ranting and raving like he is today. And I know that the National Party's a lost cause. The day, the day you make your flag bearer, Nick Smith, you're lost. Actually, I'm You're not seriously lost. stuffed. I'm not lost. I know oh, sorry, I not, not you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, the day a party makes some tired, worn out Member of Parliament with such a specious political background, uh, such a specious background, <laughs> uh, the flag bearer of the party, they are desperately lost. Mr. Smith has in the past told Parliament statements, such as the pecuniary interest statement he made which has never, ever been honoured. On the, question, on the question, for example, of whether it is right for a, a member of parliament to be asked to stand aside and go and face a by-election to seek their own mandate, Mr Smith, when that, last, when that was last put to him in the form of the Tauranga by-election on the 17th of April, 993, he and his party never even turned up. That's how strong and principled they are on this issue. There's something unique about these little first in this context. There's something unique about New Zealand in this context. Only two members of parliament in the last half century have ever had the decency to put it on the line in a by-election. I'm one, and Tariana Tura is the other one. And all the rest are high-minded, 
a high-minded hypocrisy, false crocodile tears, no principles whatsoever. The principle behind the third reading of this bill is whether or not proportionality under our system, now 25 years old, should be honoured by members of parliament and be required to be honoured by members of parliament. And one last thing I want to say is uh, this allegation that it gives the leaders all the power in the world. This party is going this weekend to its annual conference for the 25th year. And it'll be wall to wall, packed to the gunnels. The only, the only people who have phone booth, the only people who have phone booth meetings are members like that minister over there who can't even get any himself into the phone booth. Never has it. You've never. Come on, let me ask you a question. Has anybody seen that member from Dunedin in an audience? Um, what does that have to do with the bill? Well, he just was, uh, uh, what it has to do with the bill, Madam Chair, is this is a parliament, and if people want to interject, they can stand a rejoinder. They, they do. It's called a binding open democracy. But that's what that's about. Back to my point. But there are can rules I just in say this democracy. This? The, so allegation, the, the allegation that the leader has all the say is utter humbug. We go to our 25th year celebration this weekend. Can I say that is the second longest surviving political party in our country's history that has not changed its name. The second longest in this party's history that hasn't changed its name. And we've gone 25 years because we are a consultative democracy. We are a consultative democracy and my colleagues know they have more say in this party than they would in any other. That's why I commend this bill. Madam Chair. I call Speaker. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I do seek your indulgence and I do want to explain. I seek the leave of the House to table a press release that is only available from the Parliamentary Library by the Right Honourable Winston Peters, saying that MPs must be able to leave their party and should not be blindly loyal to the party on which they were elected. No, it's absolutely critical. Contradicts what, everything you just said. What, what um, uh, are, you, are you using the, the uh, speaker's ruling that uh, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee brought to? I was referring to the, the House speaker. earlier because this press release is only available from the Parliamentary Library. It is not generally available to members, okay. on, on and that, it contradicts what the Right Honourable Winston Peters has just said to the Parliament. I will put the leave. Is there any objection? Yes. Yeah. 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 Madam Chair, the Honourable Maggie Barry, I rise to speak on the electrical.